I think you're probably aware, last uh, night, past uh, midnight at local time in uh, Greece, Tsipras uh, came out of the Council of Ministers of the, of the government uh, meeting and he made a televised address to the, na to the nation and he announced that uh, there was going to be a referendum. This referendum is going to take place on the 5th of uh, July, that is Sunday uh, week. And the referendum is going to be about the latest uh, ultimatum, which the Troika, which is the European uh, Central Bank, the European Commission and the, the IMF, has given to the, to the Greek people, to the Greek uh, government to be implemented. Now, the, the language that uh, Tsipras used in his uh, address to the nation was very strong language. He talked about uh, these conditions being humiliating conditions, that this was a blackmail on the part of the institutions, that what was being uh, demanded was further deregulation and attacks on workers' rights, further increases of, of uh, tax, uh, and a whole number of uh, measures which uh, he said were against uh, the national dignity and national sovereignty of Greece. And he also said that these measures were against the principles of the European Union. Now, uh, this is a different matter, because in fact, uh, the principles of the European Union are precisely this. Uh, when the Maastricht Treaty was uh, signed a few years ago, what it meant basically was that the basis for the European Union was permanent austerity uh, policies imposed on the governments of all countries by a certain limits on, on uh, indebtedness and uh, debt to GDP ratio and the deficit of the, 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 the different governments were able to incur in, in. But never mind, he made a very strong speech and uh, if you read the speech carefully and you, you know anything about the history of Greece, you will see that this is really a call to uh, arms, it's a call to rebellion. He says, the, the, on our shoulders, is the weight of the historical tradition of the Greek uh, people who've never been humiliated, have a proud history of struggle and this, that, and, and the other. And of course, in history, there have been other times in which the Greek people were given an ultimatum and they uh, waged uh, ferocious uh, uh, resistance, heroic uh, resistance against ultima ultimatums. And he is trying to uh, arouse that same uh, kind of feeling, the same kind of uh, mood. And uh, when Tsipras talks about humiliation, he is completely correct. Anyone who's uh, followed the last few months of the negotiations between the new government in Greece that was elected on January 25th and uh, the Troika, which now is no longer called the Troika, it's called the, in the institutions, but it's basically the same institutions, there are three of them, so you can call them whatever you want, but it's still a, a Troika. And, and this is uh, something that people in Greece do, do realize. Uh, the, the content uh, of these negotiations has been one humiliation after another. Uh, the Greek government is asked, uh, is told in no uncertain terms that it has to come up with a concrete and detailed list of measures it is going to implement. And when the Greek government comes up with this list, then this list is not good enough. More con concretion is demanded. More pre measures are, are demanded from the, from the Greek uh, government. For five months, more and more demands have been piling up on the Greek government, on the part of the, of the institutions, without, without anything being given in a change. Uh, because uh, when they signed the agreement, uh, they signed the previous deal on the 20th of February, which uh, basically amounted to the extension of the previous bailout, temporary extension of the previous bailout, this was done on the understanding that the, the Troika was going to release uh, 7.2 billion uh, euro, which were remaining from the previous bailout, that had already been agreed and signed, uh, so that there will be a certain room for maneuver, a certain breathing space in which uh, the idea was that Greece was going to negotiate a whole uh, package in relation to the debt as a whole. But not a single uh, cent of uh, euro has been released of this 7.2 billion uh, euro. I mean, I, I don't want to bore the comrades with too many facts and figures, but there's one that I think uh, reflects the scandalous nature of this uh, relationship and the, 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 the amount to the, the, the extent to which the, the Troika has humiliated the, the, what is, after all, the sovereign uh, democratically elected government of uh, Greece, which is that throughout this period of the bailout, the European Central Bank, 
which was holding uh, Greek bonds, has made a profit on these bonds. Its profit is 1.5 or 1.6 billion uh, euro. Uh, and this money is still in the, in the hands of the European Central Bank, which refuses to release this money to Greece. So Greece owes all this money to these European institutions. Uh, the European institutions are making a profit out of the debt of uh, Greece, and they still refuse to release this money. And th this is more scandalous because the amount of money that Greece is supposed to pay to the IMF on Tuesday, the last day of this month, is precisely 1.6 billion euro. It's the same amount that the European Central Bank has made, has pro made profit out of uh, Greek uh, debt. So in reality, Greece shouldn't even be paying this money on uh, Tuesday, which is being demanded nevertheless. Uh, and the European uh, Central Bank, the European Commission, and the, and the IMF, the Troika, they refuse to release a single cent to the, to the Greek uh, people. And this sense of humiliation uh, has been building up for five months. Not only this, what in my opinion is, uh, is worst about the, the whole situation that's developed over the last five months, is that there was this feeling uh, on the part of the Greek people that the government they elected on 25th of January with a majority, with a clear mandate to do what? To end austerity and uh, to put an end to the memorandums, to the impositions on, on, uh, on the economic policies of Greece. Throughout these five months has been seen to be making one concession after another to the, to the Troika. Uh, and this concession started early, early on and, and we criticized them at every single uh, step. Uh, the fact that they went into a coalition agreement with a right-wing populist party, the independent uh, Greeks. The fact that they uh, proposed the election of the president of the republic uh, a candidate who is an experienced right-wing polit politician from new uh, democracy. All this was done in the understanding that this will uh, soothe the markets, will calm the markets, will, uh, will calm the market spheres, and will uh, allow for, a, for an agreement to take uh, place. And then on the 20th of February, uh, the government already broke its uh, mandate and signed a deal which included uh, privatizations, the postponement, the indefinite postponement of, of a whole number of the measures that the government had stood on in the elections and so on. And that was bad enough, but it was said that this was just a temporary deal uh, in order to prepare for, for a full package, for, for, a, for a full uh, negotiation. And uh, so on and so on. And, and this is what we've seen in the last week. On Monday, the government of Greece, government of uh, Cyprus, the government of Syriza, made a final proposal to the European uh, Union, to the, to the Troika, of a package of 8 billion euro worth of uh, savings and uh, tax uh, increases. Uh, and this is what the Troika wanted. The Troika basically fi finally said that th there has to be primary surplus in the budget of 1% for this year, 2% uh, next year, the Greek government said, we accept this uh, demand, and these are the measures that they're going to allow for this to be implemented. Uh, and these measures were quite uh, serious. There was uh, about 2 billion euro worth of pension cuts. These are not direct pension cuts. It is not a reduction on the amount that the pensioners get in their, ta in their pension, but it's an increase in the contributions of workers to the pension uh, funds. Uh, social security contributions, and it's an increase in the amount that the pensioners have to contribute to the health insurance and other measures. So it's, it's, a, it's a cut, nevertheless, in the, at the end of the day, but it's, it's done in an indirect uh, way. The, the, this package of 8 billion euros also included about a similar amount, two, another 2 billion, of increases in VAT, uh, the rejigging of the VAT, the different VAT bands, but this included uh, a substantial increase in the VAT for basic food products like uh, cheese, uh, olive oil, and I can't remember the other one. There was a third one that was, sorry? Pasta. Pasta. Yes, yes, yes. I think there was another one, but maybe pasta as well. Anyway, so basic food products will now be uh, uh, given a VAT tax of 23% as opposed to 13%. This is a direct, uh, immediate increase of 10% in, in the price of basic food uh, products. 
Uh, who is this going to hit? It's going to hit working people. VAT is a regressive tax that everyone pays the same, and therefore the ones who have less, in effect, are paying more than the, than the capitalists. The capitalists are not particularly worried about VAT. Uh, and then, on top of all these uh, different measures, there was another part, which was about 1.9, about 2 billion uh, euros of uh, taxing the rich, taxing the capitalists. There was an increase in the rate of corporate tax from 26 to 29 percent, and a one-off, and this is the most important part of this uh, package from the point of view of taxing the rich, a one-off 12 percent tax on the profits of all companies making over half a million euro a year, which is not many, it's about 1,500 1, companies, but it would put some of the burden of these cuts on the, on the capitalists. What was the response of the Troika? At the beginning, on Monday, it seemed that they agreed. They said, this is a good basis for a framework to study and discuss a possible agreement uh, and so on in, in the inimitable language that they use. But then on Tuesday, the IMF said, this is not acceptable. And they put their foot uh, down. And it's for different reasons. I don't, I don't want to go into all the details because otherwise it's going to be very long. But I think that uh, the counter proposal that they came, they came up with shows clearly what's the, what was their aim. And they said, yes, we agree there has to be 8 billion uh, uh, euro package. We agree with the general principle. But we want, first, more cuts in pensions, more direct cuts in pensions, earlier introduction of pension cuts that are already in the government proposal, that some of the things were supposed to be in introduced in 2025, should be introduced by 2022, other things should be immediately implemented from this uh, year instead of being phased out over, over a period of time. I putting more pressure, a uh, higher uh, percentage of the burden on pensioners and uh, working people. And remember that pensioners in uh, Greece have already lost about uh, 40 to 50 percent of the value of their pensions. And about 45 percent of Greek pensioners now live under the poverty line in a situation where there are hundreds of thousands of families uh, in Greece where the only income is the pension of the, of the elderly who live in that uh, family uh, unit. And so more, more the pensioners are being asked to pay even uh, more. The other part of the IMF counter proposals or the Troika counter proposal was that there should be higher increases on, on uh, VAT, i.e. the workers must pay more. And then, scandalously, they said that uh, the, sh the, the, the corporation tax will not rise from 26 to 29, but only to 28. But scandalously, the, the, the one-off uh, tax on profits, which was going to bring in a large amount of uh, money, I can't remember, half a billion or something like this, was going to be scrapped, completely deleted. So it's clear the IMF was demanding that the workers pay more, the pensioners pay more, the poor people pay more, and the capitalists get off uh, uh, scot-free from this uh, package. But even this was not the reason why the deal was uh, broken in the end. Because over the next few days, there were lots of different meetings and negotiations at different levels, political meetings, technical meetings, the Eurogroup uh, finance ministers meetings, the, the political meeting, and so on. And they, were, and they were narrowing down the differences. By the end, it was said, uh, that the difference between one proposal and the other was only about 100, 100, um, what is it? 100 million euro. This is a small difference out of a total package of 8 billion, right? So why is it that there was no uh, deal? And, and the one thing that finally made it, finally broke this deal, was the fact, as Orestes explained, that uh, Germany and Finland put their foot down and said, Whatever deal is on the table is not related and can, that cannot come accompanied with any debt relief or restructuring of the Greek uh, debt. So, I mean, uh, even, uh, even uh, Tsipras and uh, Varoufakis, the, the Greek finance minister, who have tried, uh, their whole strategy has been based on trying to get an agreement. And they've made concession after concession after concession. But all these concessions they were making in the hope to get some debt uh, relief, they can't make all, all concessions and then come up with nothing in a change. It, it's, completely, it's complete uh, madness. And this is what finally broke, uh, broke, broke, the, broke the deal. Uh, and, and Tsipras returned to Greece, um, called for a, for a meeting of the government, and they said, uh, we're going to go for a referendum. 
And, uh, but, the, but the thing is that why is it that Tsipras wants to go to a referendum? What's the thinking behind it? And a number of ministers have come out uh, last night and this morning, and they have explained it clearly. The, the Minister of Interior, the Minister of uh, Administration Reform, a whole number of ministers have said it, black on white, white, uh, black on white. They said, <clears throat> what we want is a no vote in this referendum. We want to reject the Troika's latest ultimatum so that we can uh, get a better negotiating position and seek a better agreement with the uh, institutions. So despite the fact that uh, five months have gone and the one clear conclusion from these five months is that the whole basis of the negotiating strategy of the leading group in Syriza is completely bankrupt, the idea that you can implement the, the Salonika program, the Thessaloniki program of reforms on the basis of reaching a deal with the Troika, that somehow you can either divide the Troika, uh, divide the European countries between the soft and the hardliners, that you can maybe rely on the United States, which has a different position, that you can somehow convince them with uh, trickery or financial wizardry or words uh, or, or by any means, that you can convince them to basically uh, allow Greece not to pay its debts for a period of time while they get economic uh, growth, so that then when they get economic growth, uh, on the basis of a Keynesian program, they will be able to repay it. So that's, that's the whole basis of the negotiating strategy of Varoufakis and Tsipras. But the Troika at each point, uh, at each juncture has said no, 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 no. And even when they say no yesterday and the whole thing breaks down, they still hope that somehow, miraculously, by getting a big vote against the Troika's ultimatum, then the Troika will be somehow convinced uh, because they are too afraid of uh, Grexit and the uh, economic implications of, of Greece uh, leaving uh, the Eurozone, that they will uh, make, put, put some other deal on the table. And this, in my opinion, is difficult to say. Uh, and the last five months have shown us that there is, no, uh, that there is nothing, very, nothing completely definite in, in relation to these negotiations. But this seems to me that it's very unlikely, highly unlikely. Un, uh, and in the end, if you think about it, it comes down to this as well. It comes down to the, uh, to the question of that the Greek people voted for a government with a clear mandate to end austerity and implement a whole series of basic reforms, an emergency social program uh, to reverse the cuts that have been implemented in the past and alleviate the situation for working uh, people. And we fully agree with this uh, program, with these uh, demands, with these measures. Uh, but the European uh, Union, the IMF and the, and the European Central Bank are not prepared to allow this government to carry out these policies. So it also reveals uh, the limits of bourgeois democracy, isn't it? You can vote whatever government you want, but uh, at the end of the day is the capitalists in your own country, and, and in this case the, the European uh, capitalists, who decide what is possible and what is not possible. And this is for two reasons in this case. It's for two reasons. One is uh, an economic reason. Greece is in uh, recession, is, is in recession again. They come out of recession at the end of last year, but this whole uncertainty has uh, thrown them back into recession. Uh, Greece is in a, in a deep recession, it's lost about a third of its uh, GDP in the last four or five uh, years, and, uh, and there's no room for implementing a reformist policy of, of uh, making concessions to working people, uh, of implementing the Thessaloniki program. And uh, from a European point of view, this cannot be allowed because it will set a bad precedent. Other countries will say, well, well, I mean, uh, we, we also owe a lot of money, but if the Greeks are allowed to implement policies that uh, are not so harsh, why are we not uh, allowed to, to implement the same uh, policies? Uh, and also there's another political reason that if, if Angela Merkel in Germany is seen as making concessions to the Greeks, making concessions to the Greeks, and therefore making uh, the German taxpayer pay for part of that or lose money that's been lent to the, to the Greeks, lo loaned to the Greeks, the, the, that will be a, uh, the, there will be a political, uh, uh, that will be in, in her political uh, detriment. But there's another political reason that is that, that uh, the illusions that were created with the election of Syriza in uh, Greece 
were, were not limited to Greece alone. They had a powerful impact throughout uh, Europe. And if, and if you allow a situation in which a government in Greece is pursuing different policies, and the government in Greece has already implemented some measures which are highly uh, significant, very limited in the economic impact, but they, they're already showing a different way, and this government cannot be allowed to continue. For instance, the reopening of the ERT public uh, broadcaster, which is a very high, uh, high um, visibility measure, the implementation of, uh, of uh, free electricity, uh, free rent, and a whole number of benefits for people who can't uh, pay, which is now affect, uh, there's now about 600,000 people have registered for this uh, scheme. If this is allowed to continue, people in Spain, people in uh, Portugal, people in Ireland will say, why can we not implement the same policies? And why can we not uh, elect a government that implements the same policies? Therefore, be, uh, Tsipras is right when he said last night that behind one of the reasons that it's, it seemed to him that one of the reasons behind this uh, very harsh treatment that they were getting was that uh, there, was, there was an attempt to humiliate uh, uh, the Greek uh, government. Uh, and in effect, to destroy it. Because at, at one point during last uh, week, they, they, they were all playing with all sorts of ideas of destroying this government and creating a new government of national unity, uh, removing the left wing from the government and the parliamentary group and getting a coalition of all democratic forces, all pro-European forces on the basis of an agreement and so on and so forth. So, uh, so this is the situation where we, where we are at. But, but Regardless, the important thing to understand, in my opinion, is that regardless of what the intentions of Tsipras are in calling for this referendum, the situation on the ground has already changed. Last week, two, three days ago, there was a situation that was becoming untenable. And this is also one of the reasons why Tsipras went for this referendum and couldn't sign the, the, the deal. Uh, there was growing discontent. No, not amongst uh, small layers of the most advanced activists, but amongst the population in general. The people who voted for Syriza started to say in opinion polls that they didn't think that the government wanted to implement its program or was going to be able to do so. And I've, I've heard from comrades that they said, look, my parents, the most fanatic supporters of Syriza, but uh, this week they were saying, I'm ashamed to have even voted for this uh, government, which is incapable of implementing its policies, and is making concession after concession. We're not talking about advanced activists, we're talking about normal uh, people who voted Syriza with lots of uh, illusions. This also put the government under a lot of pressure, because this was also reflecting through the structures of Syriza, inside the government, inside the Central Committee, there was enormous pressure building up. Uh, and therefore, the it was also the, the class struggle that prevented uh, uh, Chippers from signing this uh, deal. And now, what, I, what, is the, what, what are people in Greece thinking? They're no longer thinking this is a referendum in which the alternative is the January, the, the Monday uh, 8 billion package of the government versus the Troika's ultimatum. No, they're going to vote in this referendum again against austerity and against, uh, against the memorandum uh, policies. This is how people perceive it. Whatever the reasons that, Ch that Chipras uh, has for calling this referendum and whatever he wants to get out of it, they, they, uh, people are going to vote against the Troika, against the humiliation of the Greek uh, people, which is, uh, which is a, very, a very serious thing. <coughs> over, you, you have to just think about, uh, about what's happened over the last five years in, in uh, Greece. Millions of people uh, uh, become uh, poor. Uh, millions of people have lost their jobs. There's hundreds of thousands of workers who, who still have a job, but they don't get any wages. Uh, there's hospitals without uh, medicines, hospitals without doctors, schools without, uh, uh, with children who are poor, who faint at, uh, at the, in the classroom. This is, this is the dramatic social situation created by the crisis of capitalism and aggravated by the austerity policies. Not only this, but <clears throat> it's completely scandalous that now the Troika is demanding more austerity, when the, the whole premise of the previous austerity packages has been completely destroyed. They said, these policies are going to be harsh, but they must be implemented. And these policies will bring a reduction in the debt. And therefore, eventually, there will be economic growth. This is the only way. But instead of economic growth, we have further recession. 
instead of reduction of the debt, we have an increase in the debt to GDP uh, ratio. And people are fully aware of this in, uh, in Greece. There is a very angry mood and a very polarized and radicalized mood is developed in the last week in Greece and is now coming out in the, into the surface. There are already demonstrations today as Parliament is meeting to discuss this. There's going to be a big demonstration uh, tomorrow. Uh, and, and this is not going to be a normal referendum. This is what we need to understand. For the ruling class, this is a very important uh, thing. There's going to be a massive campaign in the mass uh, media. People are going to be, they're going to attempt to scare people into saying, if you want to remain in the Euro, which they think the majority of Greek people want to, uh, you have to, this is the only way, you have to accept this. They're going to massively push for a yes uh, vote. But in my opinion, there's going to be a massive no vote. This is not going to have uh, a, an impact. And, and the reason for this is this, that if you look at uh, the week after Tsipras was elected on January the 25th, uh, when he was, stand, was sending a clear message that he was standing up against the Troika, the popularity of the government, the support for the government and support for the government's negotiating tactics went to the, through the roof. They went to 80% support, including a majority of New Democracy voters, of PASOK voters, of Golden Dawn voters. Golden Dawn voters were amongst the most enthusiastic about the government standing up to the, to the Troika, which also reveals uh, something. Uh, and the same situation can be created now if the government is seen as standing up against these uh, uh, unbearable impositions. But this is not going to be a normal uh, referendum. There's going to be all sorts of trickery. They're already attempting or, or appealing to the president of the republic not to sign for this uh, referendum, which is the signature is required. And there's going to be all sorts of tricks, constitutional maneuvers, legal and illegal uh, maneuvers against this. On top of this, there's going to be a massive flight of capital, massive uh, deposit withdrawal, and the situation in which Greece is uh, in now depends completely on the next steps that the Troika takes. If the Troika says from Monday there's no European Central Bank liquidity support for the Greek banks, the Greek banks can't open on, uh, on uh, Monday. And we know what happened in, uh, in Cyprus when, when they found themselves in a similar situation. They were forced into signing a, a very bad deal. Uh, not only this, but then on Tuesday, the Greek uh, government is supposed to pay this 1.6 billion uh, back to the IMF, which it hasn't got. It doesn't have this amount of money, and if it doesn't pay, then it will be technically in default. So the whole thing can unravel even before the referendum takes uh, place. Cyprus hopes and has made an appeal to the European partners, uh, which, which is just called blackmailers, with good uh, reason, has made an appeal to them to be lenient and give them some leeway, a uh, temporary extension, so that the referendum can take place. Uh, and the European uh, leaders will look very bad if they actually seen as preventing the Greek people from uh, giving their opinion uh, in a democratic way. But this is not the first time that this has happened uh, in, in this crisis. You remember that uh, Papandreou already said, uh, we should put this to the referendum. And uh, he was removed. He was removed from government. He had to cancel the referendum, removed from government, and there was a, a constitutional coup. A new unelected government was put in. S such, is, uh, such are the, the stakes. In our opinion, obviously, we should, uh, the, the whole forces of the workers' movement, the left in Greece, should rally behind uh, this uh, referendum, calling for a massive no vote. But this is not enough. Is not enough. This referendum will not be decided just on the polls on next Sunday. It will be decided on the streets, on the factories, in the workplaces. Because uh, what should happen now is that the government should take defensive measures. I should immediately nationalize the whole of the banking and insurance uh, system in order to, to defend the deposits of the small uh, depositors, working people who have their money in the banks, otherwise it's going to disappear. It should immediately take measures to seize the assets of the big capitalist uh, companies in uh, Greece in order to prevent massive capital uh, flight and sabotage of the economy. And the workers should respond to this by occupying the factories, introducing workers' control, and taking defensive measures against sabotage in the, in the economy. The potential is there. If a call was made in this uh, direction, it will immediately uh, uh, be met with massive uh, enthusiasm. And even if the government doesn't make such a call, which it should, 
uh, is not ruled out that some of these things happen on the initiative from, uh, from uh, below on the part of the pub public sector workers union, the banking sector workers union, uh, the, 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 the whole mood in the demonstrations is taking measures in this uh, uh, direction. So we, we go towards a very polarized, very radicalized uh, week in which the workers will draw many, many uh, uh, conclusions. And my final point is this. The main weakness in this war, because this is a war, is a war between the Greek working people and the capitalists in, uh, in Europe and their allies in the ruling class in, uh, in Greece. The, the main weakness in this war is the weakness of the leadership. The leadership of, of our own uh, troops, the troops on our side, has been uh, acting on a false premise that an agreement was uh, possible, has been vacillating, making concessions, throwing away the support it had at the beginning of uh, the government, five months uh, uh, away, vacillating at every stage, uh, introducing confusion rather than, uh, than introducing uh, clarity. And this is also something that needs to be, uh, that needs to be said. A proper balance sheet of the policies of the leadership also needs to be, to be made. But the, the main point now is to prepare for this uh, battle in Greece and internationally because uh, pressure from the European uh, workers' movement will also, uh, can also play a certain role in, uh, in these mass mobilizations in every country against the Troika's uh, uh, scandalous ultimatum on the Greek uh, people in defense of uh, democracy, in defense of the interest of the Greek working people are necessary because what's at stake in Greece is not just the future of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Greek working uh, people, but also the, the similar policies that are being implemented in, in other countries. A defeat in Greece will set back the movement in other countries. A victory in Greece will encourage the movement in other, in other countries as well.